As agents, we do have to evolve. We've got to have an eye on the future. I understand that scripts are valuable, particularly in call center environments. But at the agent level, at the kitchen table or in other interactions, if you're not being authentic, you're losing sales. A lot of agents don't network. They don't ask for referrals. I'm wondering why because deep down they don't feel they've earned and merited it, which at the root of it for some of them is that they already know they're sort of faking a personality to close a sale. A final expense agent is a grinder. They're a porch hopping, door knocking warrior. That's the way I characterize them and that's affectionate and it's a compliment. I've got at least a hundred agents that I could point you to that started out, didn't know what any of this was, that starting in January are receiving a six figure renewal. You are listening to the 8% Nation podcast, created to help you become a top producer in the insurance industry. Enjoy the show. Cody, welcome again to the 8% Nation podcast. We have a celebrity in dude, our- dude. One, one of my favorite, one of my favorite dudes, man. This guy- He, is, he knows it though, he knows it. Brandon, dude, thank you so much for joining us. Let me just spout off your resume and I'm gonna give you just some points and you this resume is probably 10 times longer than I will author of seven books personally over been in the Medicare space um, as you've seen your market space for 24 years overseen five billion in in sales with over some, 24 with, years with some big companies with some huge companies incredible incredible man articulate um, I respect you among you you're, you're you're on the Mount Rushmore right of, of Medicare sales so um, thank you so much for joining us. Brandon Clay, man, thank you so much. No, thank you, Landon, Cody. Excited to be here. I've been on with Cody a couple of times now and uh, uh, just enjoy it each and every interaction. So looking forward to what we're gonna do this morning. Dude, you're always this, you're, you're also one of the more humble dudes I know as well, you know, which I know you, I, I know that's a big piece of you. So that's, that's probably good to hear. You know, it, it, and it's funny you, you could say that. I think, you know, I always tell people you don't want to have an ego, but in sales, you kind of, it's inbred, it's innate that you've got at least some amount of ego. Yeah. I think what's humbling for me and what keeps me in check is this industry over 24 years, as Landon outlined, has been so good to me. Um, and even though life ultimately throws all of us the little mercurial ups and downs, things we can't control, the no shows, the chargebacks, and the life of a salesperson, uh, this industry overall has been so good. But I recognize at any moment, you know, that star could rise and that star could fall. So I just appreciate being on with you guys this morning. Cool. Well, you're the chief strategy officer for Heartland One Life. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about sort of your story, how you became the chief, you know, strategy officer for a, for a major Medicare company? Um, why don't you just go 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 through that story if you don't mind? Well, you know, and, and, and it's funny, a lot of people ask me, well, what does a chief strategy officer do? It's a fairly new title, kind of like CTOs and CIOs. You know, this new lexicon has given us some new opportunities, but ultimately what it means for me is being able to see this landscape, this industry that is Medicare. It's bigger than just Medicare now though. And you see that through acquisitions, through mergers, but this landscape at the ivory tower level, the billion dollar companies that are investing a lot into what we all do, all the way down to the kitchen table and the impact that that kitchen table has in the lives of Mrs. Jones, Miss Mamie, all the people we go and see every day. So from a high level strategic standpoint, I like to be sort of the conduit between the ivory tower and the kitchen table. To strategically see a landscape, figure out how we can all involve ourselves in it at the level that we're willing to invest our gifts and talents. And then in a sense of ROI, everybody pull away from those opportunities uh, a fair share equity part of it. Uh, so at the agent level, a great AEP means 20, 30, $40,000 of commission that just came in. What that means to a carrier is the ability to be able to create new products, hold the line on benefits, but more importantly, at the level of Miss Jones and Miss Mamie, it's life altering to them. So strategically, my goal and my job is to take all the fragments that, in, that are involved in the environment, coalesce them in a way that the agent can benefit from all the things that are being done and they can touch the beneficiary. Absolutely. Uh, what's, uh, where, where's, where's Brandon Clay from, man? Where, where were you born? Well, Southern accent notwithstanding, and, and I would almost put wagers out for people to tell me. Now, I'm actually in Alabama today, but that's not where I'm from. Actually, originally from a little small town called Jonesboro, Georgia. 
lived in that area all my life. I still live in a place called McDonough, me and my empty nesting wife, Natalie. Uh, three kids, three grandbabies, one on the way. Uh, but regionally, I love this area. Uh, Kansas City, St. Louis, which is where our home office is. You guys get way too much snow, too cold. <laughs> That's right. That's true. Uh, but from the south, born it's, and raised. It's, it's chilly. I thought you were about to say Jonesboro, Arkansas, which is where I was born. So uh, ah. that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Well, what's your seven books? What, what, if, if someone had to like pick up one, which one should they pick up? What was your favorite one? Which one's the best for agents? They're probably all incredible, but if you had to pick one, what would you? Well, you know, and, and I do happen, not in a shameless plugging type of way, go. but I have two of them with me. Uh, the first one I wrote is Sales Crumbs from the Master's Table. Mm. And it's actually a parable. It's uh, my life played out in mentorship form. Uh, Leroy uh, takes this little young kid, Matt Hutz, uh, Matt H out on 20 lunches and each day teaches him a new thing about sales. If I were new to sales and scared and don't know what I'm going to do next, I love this book for that purpose. Nice. Uh, it's more inspirational, though it has certainly nuggets of instruction baked into it. But in that instructional, inspirational mode, this is the one I did for the industry. Uh, when I left that last company, it was purchased by one of the bigger insurers in the country. Uh, I thought, well, hey, I'm done with this industry for a while. I had my little golden parachute. I'm probably never going to see Medicare again. But I had so many agents that I was still connected with calling me. They were struggling. And I'm like, why are they struggling in an environment of opportunity like we have today? So that's where the six hours to six figures comes in. It's, pure, it's a fairly, uh, I'll say, linear manual for specifically final expense agents that want to learn how to layer on Medicare. So those two, Cody, would be my faves. One is just a good, simple read. You can do it in a little small afternoon. The other one, the instructional manual, six hours to six figures, could literally change the way you run your business, your profession. Uh, I've got lots of agents and testimonies, and we can talk about that briefly in a moment, but those would be the two. Yeah, good. And, and you spoke on a very similar topic at the first ever 8% Nation. So thank you for doing that, man. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks for the invite. That was an incredible experience. And for anyone that's watching this, and, and even as I know you have those coming up, they're amazing. Absolutely thank amazing. Thank you, man. Well, and and is, is that something that, uh, I mean, I, I know you're a big believer in helping agents, uh, networking, learning, you're writing books, you know, obviously self-improvement, personal development is, is, is important to you. Uh, what is it about events that that you like so much? Because you guys are putting one on in the middle of putting one on right now. Uh, no, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, and, and hopefully not to feel like I'm proselytizing by using some of these terms, but it's a lot like church. I can watch one of my favorite pastors online and I can watch it on video and YouTube. And there, there's an experience in that. There's a learning in that. And, and it feeds and it resonates at a level of life. But when you put yourself in an atmosphere, Napoleon Hill talks about it in Think and Grow Rich, the mastermind syndrome, actually the sixth mind, the sixth mind is there if there's five of us in a room. Something about being in an electric environment of four or 500 agents that are going through the same struggles as you, uh, engaging in the same opportunities, some sitting high, some sitting low. So I think there's something about proximity that has a certain amount of osmosis to it. It's a little bit placebo, but at the end of the day, you start, you leave there feeling like you can take on the giant that's been killing you every day for the last two weeks. It's funny, we pull agents out of the field for a week for that event. So there's a three week w month, we still do more production because of the makeup. It's what they come back energized to do. So I'd say the first thing is just atmospheric, getting in the place where the energy ex uh, resides and then pulling into that energy. And then there's all the tactical things you'll learn, the carriers you can meet, all the things that are additive to the experience. That's good. Dude, that's incredible. So how many agents do you, you know, how many agents do you feel like you've personally helped over the years? I mean, if you had to put a number to it. <laughs> so it's, it, you know, Landon, that's a fair question. And, and you know, I, I, by way of modesty, um, I'm actually now in the terms of impact somewhere in the 50 to 60,000 range. Um, think of, you know, holding webinars as simple as a webinar, as simple as holding an agent boot camp. There's 50 in the room. And then there's meetings where you get to train and there's 500, having done that now for 24 years, uh, the numbers start to grow. Uh, and I do some things internationally as well. So some of those crowds have been a little bit larger, but they're still agent-based, they're still insurance-based. 
uh, we're all kind of one big happy family internationally because we all again face the same opportunity and sometimes the same challenges, but somewhere in that 50 to 60,000. Well, if there's anybody that has their finger on the pulse of sort of, you know, helping agents and putting a sole focus on that, um, it's you. And then also you have your finger on the post finger on the pulse of what's next as well. You know, one of the things I love to do with guys like yourself who just are just seeping with wisdom, it's like, totally. you know, you wrote your book, you know, uh, sales from the, the master's table. It's like wisdom from the master. Just anything you say, it's like good grief. It's like, I'm going to go back and watch this. And you, I don't think, think you realize the little things that he says that I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's just coming out of him naturally. So, oh, right. you know, I appreciate that. Um, also, wh- you know, where do you feel like the industry is headed? Like you got your finger on that, on that pulse. What's the next two years like? What's the next five years like? Where do you think we're headed? So great question. So there's two things to think about. Uh, there's a great expansion in the pure number of people turning 65. And now I'm leaning this, ca- this, this discussion more on the Medicare piece, but, uh, but of course, final expense fits right into that genre of 55, 65 and over. But the expansion of the number of people on Medicare is, is at the fastest time in history. As we were laughing about off camera, I was doing my decade planning. I do plan a decade at a time. And at the end of this one, 2029, I'll be 65. But so there's an expanded growth in the sheer number, but the way those consumers will buy, enroll, and do things are gonna evolve. It'll be more technology based. You know, there's new platforms available. We make them available to agents where you can do online enrollments. And as you get sophisticated, and I'll be careful here, you can even do enrollments, and I'm going to say the word telephonically. Now, again, there's a great debate about the compliance elements. Don't let the Medicare people come running. But that mm-hmm. technology is going to evolve and grow so that Ivory Tower to the kitchen table is going to become more of Ivory Tower technology. Ivory Tower kiosk at one of these uh, drug outlets that are owned by these large companies So we as agents are going to need to evolve and stay ahead of the technology curve. If you're still turning in paper applications, you're already a dinosaur. Mm. You've got to learn to get engaged with the, with the way the technology and the way the carriers want to interact with you with the technology. So you can be at the forefront of change as it's coming already. Wow. I mean, I like Jurassic park, but, but I don't want to be a dinosaur in this industry. Right. I mean, dang, that's good. That's a strong, bold statement, though, and I like it. Well, what, what, yeah. Good. No, well, no, Landon, I was just going to say, you know, and and even as you mentioned Jurassic Park, and and I think uh, Dr. Landon said something about life finds a way, you know, as agents, we do have to evolve. We've got to have an eye on the future. Uh, And it's not that I could immediately say that we're competing with the carrier, but if the carrier is relying on us, to bring the the opportunities to them and say, here's your membership. Oh, and by the way, here's your lifetime renewal in the case of Medicare Advantage. Then we've got to deliver on that in a way that makes consistent economic sense for the carrier and do it in a way that's, uh, that's going to grow with the technology that's available. So there's so much more to that, but I think that's the key. It's getting bigger, but it's going to evolve and technology is going to be at the forefront. I could easily see it, man. I easily could. That's good. So author of seven books, you said you had three more on the way. So what, what's knocking around in your brain right now in terms of the wisdom that you're trying to add value in these next three books? Obviously, you've already formulated that in some way. Can we have any sneak peek on Brandon Clay's sort of wisdom he's about to drop on the community? Oh, 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 the, the, this is, uh, what, what, what do they call that? Uh, you heard it here first? Exclusive, you know, breaking, breaking news. news. <laughs> you know, we heard it from Brandon. Not sure how breaking, but... So, you know, and both you guys mentioned it, uh, I'm big into self-development, personal development. I read uh, voraciously and and not that that, you know, is to impress anyone, but I was raised under the whole thing that you just read, you read, you read, you learn and you digest. I'm on Blinkist, I do Audible, I read physical books, I do e-tablets. If I buy a book, I might have four forms of it available. and, And that means, so a $10 book may cost me 50 bucks, but I'm consuming it in four different ways. So to make sure I finish it, to make sure I digest it. And then I have a way to to express it back in my day-to-day living. If it's a, if it's something that's going to make me better uh, or if it it just gives me something fresh and new to talk about, to relate to people. So Landon right now, my focus and goal is a little less of the technical side and more about getting people to see their lives in a much bigger way. And that does immediately have an impact on the way 
people run business, people raise their children, people uh, engage their hobbies, whatever it might be. So I'm more into that vein at this point. Well, can we can we unpack that at all a little bit? You know, ap so absolutely. So one of them actually, which it would be directly related to sales, is called authentic sales voice. Mm. You know, we we get trained and we sit down in a class and we learn all these things through rote training and rote learning. And look, I understand that scripts are valuable, particularly in call center environments. But at the agent level, at the kitchen table or in other interactions, if you're not being authentic, you're losing sales, not because you don't have a great solution for the situation that's being presented, but you're not doing it in a way that's believable and authentic. So I have two concepts, the message, which ultimately is the product, the pitch, the features, the advantages, the benefits. But then there's the messenger and that's us. And the, the nuancing and the idiosyncratic way we deliver our message as the messenger, to me has everything to do with conversion. So if I simply show up as a bad messenger with a great message, I'm just an order taker. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna get me a semblance of success. But if I can refine my voice in incorporating the message, the product, the solution, and doing that in a way that's natural, a lot of agents don't network. They don't ask for referrals. I'm wondering why. Because deep down, they don't feel they've earned and merited it, which at the root of it for some of them is that they already know they're sort of faking a personality to close a sale. And I'm hoping that all made sense. So with the authentic sales voice approach, you come to the heart of what resonates to you. And I always say it this way, you're, you're talking, you're selling voice should equal your buying ear. How do you like to buy? How do you make purchases? So you should be naturally and instinctively using that concept uh, when you go out to meet people and engage to sell. That's awesome. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask about too, I almost jumped in and asked a second ago, but I remembered is uh, they say that the most successful people on earth do a ton of reading. They say that CEOs read an average of what, 50 books a year or something, maybe more. Um, how many books a year do you read? So in combination of physical, Blinkist, which is a great app, Audible, uh, I'm at about one a week. Wow. So, you know, books like Ray Dalio's Principal, those are going to take a little longer because they're thick and they're heavy. That's 18 hours of, of uh, Audible content. But, and I'm again, not trying to be a purist here, but I, I tried to watch the Farmers Open the other day, uh, golf. I love golf. I'm a big golf fan. I treat golf like a soap opera mm -hmm. and I don't have a TV. Um, and then I realized that I'd actually have to get an app that had, a t that had the capabilities to watch TV to watch it. My point is most of my life is either spent doing something like this, engaged in my professional life, my personal things, the things I enjoy, or developing myself through reading or writing. Well, why do you feel that it's extremely important to, to read and learn. And why do you think those that do end up being typically more successful than those that don't? So I have a saying, as you'd imagine, a cliche that smart skims the surface, but genius goes deep. Mm. So in some of my uh, things I do boot camps, I always ask agents uh, about the number pi. Do they know the first three digits? For $5, do you know the first three digits of the number pi? And invariably, somebody will say 3.14. Yeah. But then I say for $100, give me the next three digits. Now, in a couple of instances, some people have known it. I don't give them enough time to Google. <laughs> but some people know it's 159. So smart would certainly be to know 3.14. But genius is the 159. You're not gonna learn the deeper things about your profession, about life, unless you're reading and consuming information in a way that takes you past your status quo, that takes you out of your comfort zone. So I'll be very specific and direct to the industry. For Medicare Advantage agents, if you know the doctors in the network, that's your three. If you know the meds are in the formulary, that's your one. If you can tell them the benefits, that's the four. You'll make some sales that way. But if you know LIS and how to get them qualified, that's the one. You'll get more people enrolled. 
If you know how QMB, SLIMB, and QDWIFBDE and all of that works in the dual eligible space, now you'll be helping in the five. If you then know how to add indemnity to an MAPD to ensure against uh, the calamity of cancer or against hospitalization, now you're an agent that has gone better than SMART, 3.14, you've gone deeper, 159. And the only way you're gonna get the things I just outlined is if you're willing to pick up manuals and read, not just go through AHIP and think it's a nuisance. Go through the carrier certification information and pick up those nuggets that will increase your income. Smart skins the surface, genius goes deep, real money, six figure renewal money is not on the surface. You gotta go deep to get it. Wow. <laughs> I never heard anybody put it that way, but I love it. Yeah. Well, and the message that I hear most of the time is just grind, 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 work, 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 not, you know, and which is a, obviously work ethic is important, but you kind of put that on its head a little bit, you know, and that's interesting. You know? it, it's, a, it's a different approach from somebody that, that, that does go deep, you know. Uh, I probably can't name a sales related book that you probably haven't already read. And, and or I, that it, at least it's on the shelf waiting to be read, possibly. <laughs> there you go. There you Have go. you ever heard of a book called Getting to Yes? Yes. I love that book. That's my favorite sales book. So it's really good, dude. It's actually on my bookshelf. Yeah, if we, if we had my, the, the setting I had on the last podcast behind me, I've got thousands of books. I, and look, and, and I want to say something, Landon, and it ties in again to what you guys do on your platform, Cody. This is why when I wrote this, I love, somebody said it's kind of counterintuitive, a little bit paradoxical that a, a Medicare Advantage guy 20 years at the time wrote a book and used final expense as the foundation. What I love, you mentioned about grind, grind, grind. A final expense agent is a grinder. They're a poor chopping, door knocking warrior. That's the way I characterize them. And that's affectionate and it's a compliment. And they're kinetic. That means they're moving. So when, I, when you can actually teach a kinetic, poor chopping, door knocking grinder that there's a 3.14 and a 159. This is my third year in the organization I'm in now. I've got at least 100 agents that I could point you to that started out, didn't know what any of this was, that starting in January are receiving a six figure renewal. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah. Oh, I mean, give, give, give me a grinder that has knowledge and they'll be off the charts every single time. You, you, you gotta have both, yeah. it's, it's work ethic. You know, some people, you know, you hear that say, you know, that saying work smarter, not harder, but it's like both, let's do well, both. And so most people would see your title of your book and probably think something different than what's actually in the book. Cause you, you probably, when you see the title, you know, they've probably got to work more than six hours, but there's more to the equation, right? So it's like the four hour work week, you know? the dude didn't start out only working four hours, you know, so. Well, but, and, and I know I stop at each turn here, but that's really an appropriate point. Um, in, in thinking about the name and, and how I could get agents to engage, like Timothy Ferris's four hour work week and all the different four hour approaches he uses. It was actually, I was reading at the time, I read it typically annually, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. For those that know, I think there's 17 or 21 concepts in the book, but the title is, a, is an eye catcher. It appeals to the emotional side of, I want to think and grow rich. It, and so six hours to six figures brings you in, but then you realize in think and grow rich, it's more philosophical. He's not talking about business. He's talking about mindset, like a way a Grant Cardone might, that's been at your 8% nation. Right. So, you know, yeah, you have to draw them in with a little bit of sizzle, but the stake may be a little different than they imagine once they get into it. Exactly. It's a super catchy title. Well, and I've often found that just from a marketing perspective that we are in a new era um, with salesmanship in general. I feel like the mantra that we try to live by is people work with the people that educate them. And if you're trying to educate them on the things they can Google and click on one of the top three results and read themselves, you're not that genius level. You're still on the 3.14. So I feel like the, the sales ability, because the realistic, you know, reality of Medicare sales these days, from my perspective, I'm not licensed disclaimer, I'm not selling Medicare, I'm just giving my insight on working with Medicare agents, is that, you know, I don't need, if you're selling Medicare, I don't need you to buy Medicare. I can go get Medicare from whoever else, you know what I mean? But if you're the one that educates me, 
on Medicare or that particular program or help me save money on a prescription drug plan or all these other acronyms that you threw out. You're going to get my business and I'm going to stay with you because you educated me on it, period. And you can't, education is not surface level. You got to really dig deep, you know? And so I think that translates to not only sales, but marketing, but all things industry, because the power of a salesman just, you know, being the person that was in front of the person at the time and, and having the leverage over the buyer is kind of over. Cause I can just go to Google and figure out if you're full of crap in about five seconds, Yeah. you know? So I feel like that's a key component. You talk about the trends in the next 10 years. You've got to focus your marketing, your messaging, your sales ability on educating and how are you going to do that if you don't have good content? That's my thought. What do you think? I mean, does that make sense, Brandon? Oh, well, fantastic. And yes, there's been an evolution. So, but I can hear a lot of new agents that don't know the three yet that are just finally expensive, They're not even health licensed. So we don't want to, and, and not that you did this, Landon, but we want to characterize for them that there is a progression, a matriculation, and that you can earn money all along the way and that you don't have to be some 24, 25 year expert to do what we just described. But I will say it this way, in the very beginning, if you're new, you are in the effort phase. Now effort means you've got to do more than others that are skilled. But in the effort phase, you're likely in the beginning, especially Medicare, you're going to be a 3.14 order taker. Oh man, the docs are in, the meds are in, and here are your benefits, Ms. Jones, it's good. But sooner or later, through effort, you'll enter the skill phase. And then you've got to become a professional. Then you've got to become what you describe, Landon, as an advisor. And then when you really get off the charts, you're going to be an advocate. And people that have advocates in their lives call me to say, I'm about to get cable. What, what subscription service should I join? I'm like, I have no idea. But the level of trust because I'm an advocate for them is there. They, they don't want to make any decisions without your input. And I'm being a little facetious, but between advisor and advocate is where that six figure renewal income and longevity in this industry, that's where it's going to come from. And also I'm assuming a predominant amount of your referrals. I mean, your dad is like that too. Yeah. You know, that dude's business right. is built on referrals and he's built an amazing business and it's not because he's, um, you know, going through surface level, just running numbers. No, like you Brandon know. said, it, it's, uh, it's pure education. And m most people in our industry too feel like, as Landon said earlier, that y you, you give away just enough to make people want more. It's really not how everything works nowadays, you know? Um, which is probably why we do so much content and why you're writing so many books and everything else. People want, you know, they, they can find the answer whether you give it to them or not, you know? So why not give it all away? Well, you know, and, and you mentioned, you know, your dad, Brian, and he and I are likely in the same age range. Won't put Brian's business out. 39. <laughs> <laughs> We're sort of the old schoolers that have learned and adopted the new school. So I think one of my colleagues, my buddy says, old school rules, new school tools. And we've evolved to where relationship is at the core of what we do. But that education, which is gained through knowledge, which is gained through reading, which is gained through the excellence of wanting to be great in the industry. So he has evolved rapidly and has now built an amazing uh, body of work in his own right. Uh, and now he's got you integrating all of these sort of uh, new wave, new age opportunity tools. The combination of those is a, is a Molotov cocktail that no one can beat. Mm. A good cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good, man. Well, you know, Brandon, dude, it's like I feel like I could go back and listen to this. And you have those, if you ever heard of the term axiom, you have so many axioms you've given out in this last, you know, little while. Um, do you have any other, you know, I always tell this to people, our audience is predominantly younger in general. Um, do you have any just words of wisdom? If, if you could go back and do it over again, 24 years, if you if you if you're on year one again. What would you do differently? So I'm going to tell a story if that's okay. Sure. Um, so I look at my life in decades. As a matter of fact, I just did a retrospective from 2010 to 2019. Now I'm planning 2020 all the way to 2029. And one of the stories I've been telling at the various uh, events I've been in is a story about the golden arches. So my kids were little. I was actually just like your dad, Brian. I was working at a company. I was a new agent selling Medicare for the first time, 1996. My son was six, one was four. I told him, we're going to go into the office today. I need you to be good for me. So I promised them McDonald's. 
And we, they had a great day. Everybody complimented them on how good they'd been. Then we're driving down the road going home. And the first golden arches, as you would imagine, is in the blue sky, 60 feet in the air. They didn't say a word. We, we skipped five or six more exits. But then around the seventh exit and the seventh McDonald's, my youngest son in the baby seat started to, to quiver and cry. And I realized he didn't think we were going to go to McDonald's. We ended up at a great McDonald's. The, Mor the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were there. The, they had a birthday party. They let the kids join in. And I realized in my own life, and I'm going to give this admonishment to both the young kids here and to anyone, I always say it's not a calamity that you would pass the exit and not have, uh, to have your dream deferred or your dream delayed. The calamity is to stop shedding a tear when you pass the exit. So what do I, what do I want to drive home? For the young people that have goals, dreams, visions, they're challenged by life, just to dig in, stay focused, shed your tear, know that it's going to be momentary loss, momentary challenges. And I know I'm being very old man philosophical here, but what I find in this industry is that most agents quit and give up because they don't know to stay in. They don't know to stay connected. They don't know to stay focused. They stop, and then they even stop crying about the fact that it's not happening. And then they go on to another industry. And to me, that 8% nation, I think is great. But what about the 92? Some of those people are eventually, if they can hang in and stay focused on their golden arches as the metaphor, they will find their way into great success and that would be my wish, Landon, for them, is that they find some interactive way, something to interact with, like you guys, uh, to be reignited around their goals, their hopes, their dreams for this industry and for their lives. And, and I know that was long, but that's my self-development bent, is to get them to a place where they can grow. Well, that's why you build 8%, bro. Nation, that's it. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's it. it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Well... Do you have anything else for this man we could, of wisdom? We could go on forever. We're at 32 minutes. I, I'm, Dude, thank you for being on, man. Yeah. No, no oh. worries. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for always being being involved. And uh, I remember I remember when I was talking to Tegra a few years ago, and I can't believe it's already been a couple of years ago, and I said, uh, man, I said, dude, um, if you were going to pick a speaker in our industry to speak at my first 8%, who would you recommend? He said, I know just the guy. Yeah. His name is Brandon. And here Jake we good people. He is good, man. He's awesome. Dude, I'm blown away, man. I really feel like, you know, the wisdom that you shared has been, uh, I mean, people, I, I feel like this is going to be one of those podcasts that people just re-listen to. I so, do too. Um, 10 years from now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be on Medicare. I'll sign up with you, Cody, or Landon, if you get your life. <laughs> there we go. Done. There we go. You heard um, first. Well, I mean, do you have any other questions or, you, I mean, is there anything else left? I feel good, man. Thank you for sharing all the wisdom. Thank you for your time. Uh, I know we'll see you here, uh, I believe, really soon. So. Yeah, we'll see you at Grow, at Grow With Us 2020. So do you, you want you want a quick plug of that conference? What's going on? Is this, this is going to go live before that, right? Uh, when, 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 when's the event? Yeah, when's your event? What's the date? Ours is February 24th, 25th, and 26th. Oh, okay, nice. 24, that's right. 25th, that's 26th. right. That's right. Down in down in down in uh, Hearst or Dallas area. Yeah, Dallas. What do you, uh, they could just uh, search online for that. They've got, there's a landing page that has all that information. But yeah, if you're in the Dallas area, come see us. We'll be there. Yeah, you'll be there. You'll be speaking. Um, I'm big, sure. Yeah, big big news. I hope from so. I hope you're speaking. I'm I'm I'm, I'm ready. I think so I'm gonna take some notes again, man. So. They get me for free. So absolutely. <laughs> there you go. There you so go. if you want to get around, you know, if you want to take, you know, Brandon's advice, then get get your butt to grow with us 2020 and and come see us at Eight Percent Nation. When what, plug that real quick, man. When's that coming? Yeah, Br Brandon's uh probably uh, sneak peek will probably be there once again. Maybe. Maybe in, in Vegas at the Palms. Uh, we'll have 1,500 to 2,000 agents in attendance. Uh, massive theater that's going to be fun and full and filled and it's going to be a heck of an event, man. What's the date? July 24th, 25th. All right. So six months from four days ago. 
Ah, six months. I didn't know we hit the six month mark. We did four days ago. Right yeah. on. Crazy. Dude, thank you again, man. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, Brandon. On. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you very much. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate you guys always. I'll see you in a few weeks. All yes, right. See, see you, man. Soon. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us on this 8% Nation podcast. We appreciate you guys very much. Thank you so much for watching the 8% Nation podcast. I got a couple quick videos for you. 2020 Medicare updates with Mr. Tony Merwin and how to start an insurance call center. Click on one of those podcasts, check them out, and I'll see you there. Leads is the number one question that always comes up. How do I get in front of people? Yep. Hey, I can write insurance. Writing insurance is the easy part. Yeah. You can teach a monkey how to write out a contract or fill out an online app.